Mobile apps are great. Statistically speaking, you're probably watching this video on mobile right now. Despite the amount of use mobile gets though, the number of apps being installed is actually going down. And this is scary for developers looking to get into and start building new applications. I think this is one of those things that doesn't get talked about enough. And I wanted to dive into the numbers and help us all reflect both as users and developers of mobile applications so we can think through what the future is going to look like. So without further ado, let's take a look at a really jank sheet in Google Sheets. This sheet has some numbers I grabbed from two different surveys. One was of the number of applications being installed every year, and the other was of the number of smartphone users in billions. The number here is pretty insane when you remember um, how many people on earth. Yeah. Yeah. So of the 7.8 billion, supposedly 6.5 have smartphones. Maybe. Might be a little, little high, but uh, this number could also be a little low. Hard to know for sure, but the point is there's a lot of people with smartphones now. Despite that, the number of applications being installed is actually going down. In fact, the number of apps installed in 2022 wasn't just less than 2021, it was less than 2020. Even though the number of smartphone users is continuing to go up, the number of application installs is not. And when we look at the actual survey, you can see compared to the older years, there was very consistent growth for a while. And then, crazy enough, right around when COVID started, it flatlined. People had the apps they were cool with. They weren't looking for new apps as much. If you're looking to get into app dev, that's kind of scary because if there are less apps being installed, there is some amount less developers needed to build those apps. And as we're no longer building new apps, rather we're maintaining the existing ones and making a better and better experience for those users, the number of devs we need to help with that is not going up anymore. And this is scary. If you don't know this about me, I actually started in mobile dev. I was originally hacking on custom Android stuff, eventually moved to iOS, and then somehow ended up doing backend dev. But I, I came from the mobile world, and seeing this is scary. On top of that, the number of developers you need to work on a mobile app is also going down. Obviously, React Native's a big part of this, and we'll talk a bit about that in the future. Before React Native and tools like it existed, before we had good package managers in iOS, before Android development became a viable thing with Kotlin, it took many more developers to make usable apps. Hopefully it has gotten easier to do, but that doesn't make these numbers any less scary. Just because mobile apps are dying doesn't mean your effort is though. React Native isn't just useful on mobile. In fact, it's useful on PlayStation. I've wanted to talk about this for a while, but haven't gotten the right connections. Thankfully, the sponsor of today's episode has. Believe it or not, React Native EU actually reached out to see if I wanted to help a bit and more importantly, promote the awesome conference they're about to throw in. Wrocław. If you're interested in hanging out with a bunch of React Native devs in Poland, I cannot imagine a better place to do it than this event. All of the React Native conferences that I've been to have been some of the coolest stuff I've attended. And this one has a talk about PlayStation apps. Yes, they're finally going to start sharing the secret sauce of PlayStation using React Native under the hood. I am so hyped. I am sad I can't be there, but I will absolutely be watching and covering all of the cool stuff happening. If you do end up going, please tweet at me when the PlayStation stuff happens because I... Yeah, I want to know more about this story. I've wanted to for a while. I have a link in the description and a coupon code for 10% off if you are interested in attending. Back to the video. I think it's important to look at the numbers here, where we see that the number of applications installed per user is plummeting. In COVID year 2020, the number of apps the average smartphone user installed was 24, which was a huge jump from the 20. But we're actually down to just under 22 now. When you compare these two numbers in this way, this spells a much scarier story, in my opinion. And that's why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to make sure we took the time to think through whether or not we need a mobile app or not. And more importantly, whether or not your new mobile app is worth building in the first place, because we don't know if you, we can get users to install it or not. It's a bigger and bigger ask nowadays to get a user to install a new piece of software on their device when they could just go to a web version. And there are more and more users just preferring the web version anyways because it loads in their browser and it might even be faster for them, especially on older devices. Now that Apple is pushing to support progressive web apps on iOS better, you're even gonna have push notifications in the next iOS update from the web without going through the app store. Core of this isn't to scare people who are really into mobile. It's to start a conversation about how realistic it is to focus on native application development today. If you can do it in a way that doesn't cost your company a lot and genuinely benefits the experience of your users, users use your application enough to justify having a native app, 
it's probably still worth spending the money. But generally, the justification of building an app is getting harder and harder to do. And what we're going to need to make this worth it is better technologies for existing developers to also work on good mobile apps on the side. On top of that, we as web developers need to get better about building our web apps to work on mobile. That doesn't just mean make your UI scale to big and small sizes. It means make your components work well on touch. It means stop using hover behaviors for everything. So you can't hover with your thumb. It means rethinking some amount of how we build good UIs on the web because web users are often mobile users specifically. Turns out these numbers are annoying to find. The data exists, but none of it's collected the right way. Roughly, we agree around 60% of web traffic, give or take like 20 points, but we'll, we'll say around 60% of web traffic comes from mobile devices, not from desktop computers or laptops and Chromebooks, those types of things. And a negligible part is tablets, like under 10%. As such, Building for touch UIs is actually really important, and we should be thinking about that as we build applications for our users. The future is one where developers can make apps quickly that serve their users better, and the user can use the app quickly without having to go through the app store or whatever other things. The relationship between the developer and the user is going to continue getting closer, and the web is the path there, not mobile applications. This is also why platforms like React Native are so valuable, because without them, we don't have a great way for developers to directly update things for the users. We do have some code push systems appearing both in native applications as well as in Flutter. But when your core binary, the React Native JavaScript bundle, can be hosted on a server and updated from said server, it becomes much easier to ship the right solution to your users. We're going to do something different. I have two videos here. The one above is for those of y'all who like or really don't like Flutter, where I talk all about why I personally don't as well. I have a video here where I talk about the Airbnb article that made everybody hate React Native in the first place. I think both are great and worth watching, so check them out if you haven't. Thank you guys as always. Peace.